Hello cousins near and far, and welcome to my channel Ancestral Spotlight. If you would be so kind as to subscribe to my channel, I would be very grateful for the support. This is the first instructional video intended for my DNA study I've been chatting about in other videos and online. While this study is arranged by personal design for the private group, the techniques can easily be used by anyone for whatever project or personal DNA study of their choosing. So first, a bit of contact information. If you have any questions or comments about the study, or anything else presented on my channel, please email me at ancestralspotlight at gmail.com. Please use a short descriptive header such as Native American DNA study, or your surname DNA study, or whatever topic you're writing about. That will help me better organize and track correspondence. I have created a private Facebook group for the Native American DNA study in an effort to bring together folks within the study to share, interact, and collaborate on findings. The group is called Native American DNA Study of the Virginias. However, while I'm focusing first on tribes of this area, that does not mean we're limited to tribes of that area for the study. So please feel free to join in no matter which tribe you hail from. Perhaps at a later date, if more tribes join in, I will change the name of the group. There are a few questions required to join the group. If you cannot answer the questions, please indicate such and one of the admins will reach out to you. Now, as with any undertaking, you're only going to get out of the study as much as you put in. And by this, I mean there is some homework, things that I cannot do for you. The first thing is that you will need to become familiar with chromosome painting. Instead of making a video covering the technique, I'm simply going to refer you to a really fantastic one titled DNA Painting Family History Fanatics Live. I'll put the link in the description below. And if you're not a fan of this one, there's plenty of others out there that will get the job done. DNA painting is going to help you become familiar with your DNA. Once you have a solid painting, you'll essentially be able to come in contact with a DNA match that has no tree information. And based on the identified painted segments you share with that person, you'll have a really good idea of which branch in your tree they should connect to. Now here is a point that I need to stress because it's confusing to some people and can create unnecessary conflict. If you have DNA tests for, let's say, 10 cousins, all descended from the same common ancestor, not all of these cousins are going to have and share the same segments for this common ancestor as you do. This is due to random inheritance. To better explain this term, I'm going to refer you to an excellent article and a few YouTube videos titled, Understanding DNA Inheritance and Your Test Results, a Segment of DNA, Watch How DNA Disappears, Understanding DNA Inheritance, and Understanding Patterns of Inheritance, Where Did My DNA Come From and Why It Matters. The links will be in the description below. I'm going to include an important tidbit here. Everyone has two family trees. Their traditional family tree, verified by paper trails, that we know absolutely to be true, as far as we can glean, and their genetic family tree. You are not going to inherit DNA from every branch and ancestor in your tree. The more family members that test, the more branches you'll have DNA matches on. It's absolutely worth testing all siblings because of random inheritance. You and your siblings inherited both similar segments and different segments from your parents and grandparents. Once upon a time before I learned this and I only had my DNA and my mom's DNA done, I had a maternal branch with zero DNA matches. Although the paper trail was sound, I began to wonder if there was a mistake. Some years later, my full maternal aunt tested her DNA and that same branch lit up with DNA matches. It's so worth testing all your siblings. Now for the steps of the DNA study. Step one, work to chromosome paint your close matches 
to get a clear idea of which segments come from all four of your grandparents. If you can go back further, awesome. If you can't get all four, that's okay too. But it's a start in better understanding your DNA. Hopefully, you'll soon be able to compare DNA with other Native American cousins from the DNA study and see if they are on your native branch or if not, at least in the right area. Step two, work to establish the lines to your Native American ancestor. If there are multiple lines, work to separate them and present them as individual lines. Step three, do your absolute best to verify your Native American lines with both paper trail sources and DNA matches. Paint those DNA matches. This will help verification. Step four, present your Native American lines and GEDmatch kit number to the Native American DNA study to be both shareable with other members, especially if you share specific ancestors, and so I can add your line and kit number into my database to do comparisons in the study. So now what happens? Well, we take the small groups of DNA cousins from each specific Native American ancestor. We find the most common segments and we cross-reference them in the World 9 admixture on GEDmatch for starters. What we should begin to see are Amerindian spikes along the segments of shared DNA. Not all the descendants will share the Amerindian segments. There is nothing wrong with this. It doesn't mean you are any more or less a descendant than the others. Due to random inheritance, you simply didn't inherit the native segments of that common ancestor. You'll simply rely more heavily on the paper trail and cousin DNA matches of that ancestor for verification. Please understand that. Here is an example. One of my direct ancestors is Mary Kenamaquand. She was the wife of Giles Brent, who is featured in another of my videos. The website DNA Explained Genetic Genealogy has an amazing article on her called Daughters of Princess Mary Kenamaquand. I'll put the link to the article in the description below. Our study here will be utilizing the exact same method as shown in this article. And with a few tweaks, you can use the same methods for any other DNA study, not just Native American. You'd simply use a different admixture project that suits your needs. Have a look at figure one. My common ancestors are Mary Brent and her daughter, Sarah Beaven. I connect on the Blandford line. So if I compare my DNA to lineage four, add about three plus centimorgans, I get about seven small matching segments. If I take my DNA over to the World 9 project on GEDmatch and check the corresponding segments of my DNA to where I match lineage 4, some, not all, will show traces of Amerindian. Since Mary Kitimaquand is the most recent common ancestor of Native American descent, we can assume that these are the segments I inherited from her. Therefore, proving by both DNA and paper trail that I do, in fact, descend from Mary Kitimaquand and that she was of Native American extraction. The other segments are likely from her husband, Giles Brent. The reason I like World 9 for the initial study is that it's less complicated and more concentrated on identifying Amerindian segments. If you wish, you can then look at your DNA in the MDLP World 22 project, which breaks the Amerindian DNA into four branches, Arctic Amerindian, South American Amerindian, North Amerindian, and Mesoamerican Amerindian. The most clear image within the shared segments between myself and lineage four is on chromosome 18. You can see the black coloring and according to the legend of the study, that indicates North Amerindian. So again, further genetic proof that I am a descendant of Mary Kidmaquand and I am North American Indian descent, albeit a very small amount. As you can see demonstrated in figure two, four of the lineages share a common segment between the 142nd million marker and 147th million marker. 
you'll notice the fluctuation of Amerindian inheritance. Again, this is due to random inheritance. So this segment, while likely of Mary Kinnamaquand and Giles Brent, clearly more of Giles' segments are coming through for three out of four of the descendants. Now going back to figure one, this is the setup I'm building in a spreadsheet which will be the Native American DNA study. The more DNA cousin clusters we have for each line, the more Native American DNA will begin to show for the Native American ancestor in common. To wrap up this video, understand that our intent is not to show that anyone is any more or less Native American, but rather to prove our lineages. Some family branches will be more prominent than others, meaning more fame, more wealth, more stories and articles, more records. For those that have a paper trail and the DNA to back up the paper trail, your line will help verify a line that lacks documentation. And on that same note, even without Amerindian DNA segments coming through, if we prove only a connection to Giles in this manner, and we can match segments to other Brent lines that have no Native American DNA, it's still verifying via DNA your connection to Giles Brent, and by association, Mary Kinmaquand, as she was his only known wife. Considering these lines are based on full relationships, not half relationships, i.e. full siblings, not half siblings, and that the DNA at this great distance would then be halved. You would likely not have any common DNA to these cousins if you were not of both Mary and Giles. This will be a slow-paced and lengthy DNA study. The more lineages and kit numbers I'm able to add to the study and compare, the more information and verification will be made whole and available to the group. So let's get to work.